Hi, my name is Michael Schuldenfrei and I am the CTO at Optimal Plus. In our previous talk, I talked about how you can harness big data to improve product quality. Today, I want to show how with the help of big data, analytics and the right infrastructure, it is possible to go much further. Quality decisions today are usually black or white. Is the part good or is it bad? Clearly, if a part fails a test, it should be categorized as bad. But even if it passes all the tests, does that necessarily mean it is good? Classic outlier detection methods will reclassify a part as bad if it is surrounded by faulty dice. An engineer will typically set up a threshold for such a rule. For example, the engineer might decide that if the yield of surrounding dice is less than 50%, the part should be classified as bad. But what happens if the surrounding yield was 51%? Well, according to the algorithm, the die is good. But what if I tell you that the die came from the edge of a low yielding wafer with a bunch of borderline parametric measurements and it was retested eight times before it passed? Do you still want that die controlling your anti-lock braking system? Probably not. To address this challenge, I would like to introduce a concept we call device DNA. We believe that ultimately, the true quality of a device can only be determined by looking holistically at everything that makes up the DNA of the device. When we talk about DNA, we are including everything we can possibly know about the device and the way it was manufactured. This includes information about its location on the wafer, the equipment used to build and test it, parametric test measurements from all of the test processes the die was subject to, wafer sort, final test, SLT, and so on, as well as the results of various quality algorithms such as good die in bad neighborhood. So how can we encapsulate all of this information and use it to make more informed quality decisions? First, we distill the raw data into what we call a quality index. This index is a weighted function of the key factors that impact device quality. The specific factors and weights can be determined by analyzing historical data for the product. The quality index can then be used to drive any number of business decisions. It can be used to bin out low quality parts or grade them so that premium parts can be sold for more than low quality parts. It could also be used to reduce test cost by skipping costly burn-in for parts with a high quality index. But in order to actually rebin parts or change the way they are tested, this information needs to be integrated and readily available to my entire global manufacturing process. To that end, we introduce the concept of data feed forward, where data collected from any step in the production flow is made available to any other downstream process. This enables a test program running at final test to look up historical wafer sort and what data in real time and use that data as part of the final test process. Data feed forward is a reality today. Leading fabulous semiconductor companies are already harnessing this capability to gain a competitive edge in the arena of product quality. We are moving the world of semiconductor manufacturing from what I call the dark ages, where the only information available to the tester was the information contained in the chip itself, to the age of the industrial internet, where we give the tester full visibility into everything we know about the chip up to the current point in time.